It's a new month and a brand new week and yet another exciting new week of the Orongo Talk. I'm your host Lena Ndakevonjo and today we're joining you from Walfish Bay. In our interview section we'll be talking to the mayor of Omaruru, Mr. Roger, and he'll be telling us about his first couple of months in the hot seat. But first up is the calendar day. So stay tuned and don't go anywhere. And it's now time for our news updates. In our first story, a member of the Special Field Force Subdivision stationed in Walfish Bay committed suicide on Friday at about 9 p.m. The commander for community affairs in the Orongo region, Inspector Eleni Shapumba, confirmed the incident saying that Constable Gideon Binga committed suicide by shooting himself in the head inside his room at the Naraval Police Barracks. In our second story, the mayor of the town, Swakupmun, Luisa Kativa, attended the occasion. She congratulated the program facilitators and the 30 beneficiaries of the project on their first harvest. These innovative urban farming solutions provide a fully controlled environment using minimal water and energy per square foot. This approach has enabled the production of leafy greens and herbs. In our third and final story, a message circulating via WhatsApp about apparent scammers walking around town and requesting access to people's home has the Walfish Bay community anxious. The message stated a guy, a guy who is roaming the streets of Hams with a lady claiming they are from the municipality and there to measure the property size. Advice, do not let them in as municipality is also not aware of them. With that said, for more news headlines, visit our website at www.orongo.com.na. Honorable Mayor, can you uh, provide us with an overview of your first eight months in office? Thank you. Um, it's a very good question. <laughs> um, one should say that there is a, a philosophy or there is a system that uh, a new groom uh, sweeps best. Now, coupled with this, I would want to contextualize that a lot of our residents uh, they had a lot of high hopes, which they still have, as we promised uh, during our campaigns that uh, we are going to reciprocate the desires, the hopes and the dreams of our people. We are going to make Omaruru again through, and coupled with our strategic objective, uh, which, is, uh, which enshrines co-creating the future of Omaruru together. However, um, it, is, it was a mammoth task due to the fact that um, we were in a transition of the 2020 to the 2021 fiscal year, uh, financial year, and uh, you should also take cognizance of the fact that without any budget, without having a budget of your own, um, there is literally nothing that you can do. The only thing that you can focus on is mainly on the, op on the operational aspects. But when we come to capital projects such as the housing, uh, such as provision of sanitation, electrification, um, roads and all those things, all the other uh, capital pro projects, there is nothing that you can do until the end of uh, your, the, the financial, the in, in inherited financial year, uh, which 
ended uh, in, 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 in June, on the 30th of June, uh, which uh, uh, on its genesis uh, uh, on the 1st of July. So that has been the challenge. Other than that, we have been very busy um, as a council trying to fix the internal uh, politics. And uh, the, biggest, the biggest of all from the political fraternity is that we, we had to switch our brains. Because remember, after elections, that is the time where you put all the party politics, you, you become non-partisan, of which Omaru, I think we are the only council, uh, or amongst the few councils. When we come to the management meetings, management committee meetings of our institution, of our municipality, we invite all the councillors. All the councillors are part. They are finished with management committee's agendas. They are part of the management committee as well. So this is a practice that was never done. And uh, we are now in the new financial year, 2021-2022. We are hoping for uh, a speedy implementation of all the capital pro projects in terms of Section 26 of the Local Authority Act number 23 of 1992, in line with Section 11 of the Local Authority Act, subsection 5, um, uh, which gives the Office of the Mayor that responsibility to oversight, to have that power to uh, supervise the development or, uh, and the full implementations of the developments as well as projects of the Council. Mm -hmm. Can you briefly expand on the level of cooperation between uh, the political uh, representatives? I, I should say that, uh, Omarul, we are fortunate because uh, we have this concept when, when it comes to local government that it is of uh, cardinal essence and fundamental value to have people that can relate to the town. I am talking in terms of having sons and daughters of that particular area. People that knows the area, people that lived in the area, people that have been born and bred in the area. That is the advantage of the Omaruru Municipal Council. We have uh, a combination of quite uh, diverse uh, uh, representation in terms of experience, in terms of uh, uh, the uh, capacity, in terms of education, and, and generational as well. So. We are very well comprised and I am very uh, happy with the level of cooperation within uh, the members of council. Thank you, sir. And it's now time for our sports news. The MR247 Wolvisha District team is competing in the Cricket Namibia Premier League and travelled to Windhoek for three matches this weekend. The coastal squad consisted of Herman Kasten, the captain, Nyasha Nyasha, vice captain, Henry Klasinga, Helman Fanzel and many others. Before the team departed for Windhoek, MR247 announced that it will once again be the main sponsor of the squad for this season. MR247 will wish a district play two matches and recorded two wins against Trasco United and CCD respectively on Saturday. The coastal side defeated Trasco United with seven wickets and CCD with five wickets. And with that said, we've come to the end of our sports news for today. For more sports headlines, visit our website at www.erongo.com.na. Um, good day and welcome to the Sport Rep Studio. Um, I'm your host, Jesse Jackson Kauraitha. Today I'm joined by the famous Limba Mupetami, um, scooping awards left, right and centre. Of course, the 17th edition of the Namibia Annual Sports Awards. Um, she scooped the Journalist of the Year online and as well as broadcasting. Welcome to the show, Limba. Thank you, Jesse. Um, well, how do you do it, first um, of all? I, I, um, that is a very difficult question to mm -hmm. answer. 
Um, I think it's just about being at the right place at the right time, mm -hmm. you know, just picking up the right stories mm -hmm. at the right time. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, one would say that you have worked hard and your work has echoed your, um, I mean, the awards have echoed that for you. Um, going forward, what does this award mean to you as a journalist yourself and as someone that's growing in the industry? Um, I think, you know, we, we are not growing any younger, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I think you, we need to be able to grab every opportunity that comes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, most probably this opens many other doors, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, recognition yes. uh, coming from, from, from uh, the sports lovers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, as, 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 a, as, a, as a journalist and as a person, one always wants to grow in the mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think at the moment I would say that uh, I just want to to represent the athletes mm. and, uh, and just to see and where just to where, see where you can go. Yeah. Um, one of the things that um, was quite um, eye catching is that the sport rep program, um, which is still a baby, but scooping such an award, competing among the likes of One Africa TV and NBC TV. How aesthetic was that? Yeah, I mean, I was a little bit surprised with that one as well, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but uh, like I said, you, when you take your opportunities, I mean, these are the results that you get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were competing against uh, people who have been in the industry, you know, mm -hmm. with the national broadcaster, people mm -hmm. that obviously also entered for, for, the, for that particular award. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the Sport Rep program, um, uh, the show that we have, obviously, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's instant. I mean, and it's mm -hmm. live and mm -hmm. the reach that, is, that, that is, it has is, is immense. Is, is, is immense. Mm -hmm. So um, I think maybe the reason why I won it is because, uh, I, I don't know, but uh, I don't mm -hmm. know what the judges were looking at, but I think yeah. it's, it's, it's just the reach that it has. No, and, and the hard work as well, the presence of the uh, sport rep, I, I must say. Um, last, one last question before we conclude is that, how happy are you, apart from your awards, um, the way the night went and the people that won these awards? Do you think they all deserved it? Yes, I mean, um, I think they, they deserved it. Um, you know, obviously these athletes really, really, really do work hard. Mm -hmm. um, I think, we're speaking about the media industry, um, the guys who were nominated and those that also entered and were not mm -hmm. nominated, I, we put in a lot of work. You must know that, you mm -hmm. know, we, we, we do this together. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, uh, it's just not my win alone, you know, it's, yeah. it's for, for, for all, all of us. us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm quite happy with how things turned out, Jesse. Okay, quite happy with that. Um, what will your word of encouragement be to fellow journalists, to fellow um, people in a sports fraternity knowing the challenges that we face on a daily basis um, what would your final word of encouragement be yeah I mean it's been it's been a very long uh, two years I must say you know mm. with the COVID pandemic also coming through and then obviously we had to sort of like change the way we report mm. uh, the change the way we bring out the sports message to the people mm. my message would be I would like to see um, more women in sports, mm -hmm. uh, more women presenters, uh, mm -hmm. sportcasters, and so forth. Mm -hmm. But in general, my message would be, um, you know, just just work a little smart. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we obviously already working hard, but just mm -hmm. work a little um, smart. Mm -hmm. And and obviously, you have to have passion for your work as well. You know mm -hmm. that. Uh, drive yeah, drive. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure more women will be encouraged to come through now that they're seeing that um, prominent ladies are picking up this award um, among competition of men. So it has been quite um, a remarkable achievement um, following in the footsteps of Kaino, uh, who also was a, a sports journalist of the year. So thank you so much, Limba. Thank you, Jesse. Yeah. The Otoya residents in Warfish Bay are finally moving today to their new houses. The Otoya residents are the Tualaloka fire victims and they are busy packing up their tents. The first tent has been packed up. It's moving day for the Otoya residents of Bishop Mons. Thank you, 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 thank you
Finally we are going. Finally we are going. We are really happy. We are really happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Today's weather report, the sun was out 17 minutes past 6 and will set 14 minutes past 7. Palvis Bay will experience a maximum of 20 degrees Celsius with a minimum of 11 and a maximum of 19 degrees Celsius predicted for tomorrow. A south southwesterly wind will prevail with a speed of 22 km per hour. The sun was out 17 minutes past 6 and will set 14 minutes past 7. Swakop Moon will experience a maximum of 18 degrees Celsius with a minimum of 12 and a maximum of 18 degrees Celsius predicted for tomorrow. A south-southwesterly wind will prevail with a speed of 19 km per hour. The sun was out 19 minutes past 6 and all set 14 minutes past 7. In this bay will experience a maximum of 18 degrees Celsius with a minimum of 13 and a maximum of 17 degrees Celsius predicted for tomorrow. A south wind will prevail with a speed of 19 km per hour. The sun was out 16 minutes past 6 and will set 9 minutes past 7. Arandas will experience a maximum of 24 degrees Celsius with a minimum of 8 and a maximum of 24 degrees Celsius predicted for tomorrow. A southwest wind will prevail with a speed of 11 km per hour. The sun was out 14 minutes past 6 and will set 9 minutes past 7. Usakos will experience a maximum of 31 degrees Celsius with a minimum of 9 and a maximum of 33 degrees Celsius predicted for tomorrow. A southwest wind will prevail with a speed of 11 km per hour. The sun was out 13 minutes past 6 and will set 8 minutes past 7. Karibub will experience a maximum of 31 degrees Celsius with a minimum of 9 and a maximum of 33 degrees Celsius predicted for tomorrow. A southwest wind will prevail with a speed of 13 km per hour. And last but not least, the sun was out 13 minutes past 6 and will set 7 minutes past 7. Omaruru will experience a maximum of 34 degrees Celsius with a minimum of 9 and a maximum of 35 degrees Celsius predicted for tomorrow. A southwest wind will prevail with a speed of 13 km per hour and that was it for your weather report.
with that said we've actually come to the end of our show for today so for more news headlines visit our website at www.orongo.com.na and if you have any video clips that you'd like to share with us contact us via our whatsapp number at 08 seven triple zero four zero and with that said it's a brand new month so keep doing you